Right. You stand in your box and you go up in the handicap. Mark Ball, who owns plenty of horses in his racing syndicates, he says, uh, hi, man. When a horse wins, it gets a raise, but connections get the chance to run under a penalty should they wish. When Ray's standing in your box, the raise is a surprise. Connections do not get a chance to react, Philip. Could these types of raise be deferred to allow connections a chance? And he gives the example of uh, the Alan King four-year-old Jib Will Farrow, who's gone up nine pounds for doing nothing, Philip. Answer, please. Okay, well, first of all, it's not a surprise because if the owners and trainers have been monitoring the form of their horse, which presumably they would do because they're obviously they're, they're mad keen on, on, on how the horse is doing, um, then they'd notice that the form had worked out well. So it would, it, it's un highly unlikely to be a surprise if the form has worked out well. But equally, we drop horses when the form doesn't work out. Uh, we did some statistics about four years ago now, the last time we did it, and we discovered that for every one horse that went up for standing in its box, three were dropped. So trainers and owners are actually net beneficiaries. Form is much more likely not to work out than to work out. And to just to take the Jibril Faro as an incident example, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a horse that's run twice, right? So he's actually not qualified for a handicap anyway, so it's irrelevant. So all that we're doing with him is saying this is the, the horse's level. Obviously, there's a fair chance he's going to run into something like the Triumph, and people will be able to see from looking at our ratings in race card uh, what, how we now assess that horse. Now, if we were just to completely ignore the fact that Connettable, the horse that finished second uh, to it, had come out and subsequently won, then we would be derelict in, uh, derelict in our duty, surely. I'm not totally convinced by the argument that just because one is put up it's all all right because we're putting others down because this scenario will always affect the horse that's in good form more than the horses that are in bad form who in fact may not win a race by going down two or three they may only <coughs> put it down 10 to 15 whereas the horse who's in form you're trying to plot you're trying to organize you're trying to keep that winning run going i'm not sure phil smith that that you can continue to use the argument that Oh, it's all right to keep putting them up because we put a few others down. Well, first of all, um, we're talking about horses there that have actually already won. We, we, we will sometimes drop horses when the form hasn't worked out, even though that winner has not subsequently run. So here's that horse. It was in form. It was winning. We put it up by, say, seven or eight pound. The second, third and fourth subsequently come out and get, and get beaten. We have then more information. I mean, when, after, the horse, after a horse race, we've, so, we've only got a finite amount of information. Yeah. Right? And surely, as more information comes onto our, uh, onto our knowledge, then surely we should be readjusting our ratings. Every other form organisation would do exactly the same. Racing post ratings would do that. Time form ratings would do that. So we're saying that the BHA ratings shouldn't do that because we, you know, we, 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 should, we should be, you know... Uh, have our hands half tied behind our back so that when we find out more information, we shouldn't be able to take that into consideration. That's just not handicapping. Andy Halliday is not happy with the way you've treated Ublon des Oboe. We talked about this at the Grand National uh, lunch. Mm -hmm. um, gone up a ridiculous amount, according to Andy. What was it, 15 pounds you shoved him up? Something like that? No, he went up 14. F well, that's um, really close to 15. Uh, yeah, but it's not 15. Um, <laughs> He's a, he was on 162. You're in one of those moves, aren't you? This bronchitis has got to you. He was on 162, uh, and, he start, and he lost his way over the last year. I mean, if he, he was running really well. He was second at Ascot, you may remember, in November, December uh, in, in 2014. Uh, he was performing really, really well. And then, for whatever reason, he lost the plot. And over four runs, I dropped him 16 pounds. Um, he then runs at uh, Newbury, and he obviously runs well. He's back to form. Now, if the first thing you look at is, you know, why would that horse, what's the, what's the reasons why that horse might possibly have come back to form? Well, you know, he wore headgear in that particular race. So there's, there's good reason to think that perhaps he might have been uh, benefited from, from the headgear. So then you think, well, I've got to put him back now to somewhere near where he was. So I look back. And, and I put him back to slightly below the mark he was when he was running really well at Ascot. So that happens to horses all the time. They lose the plot. They, 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 maybe they've got a niggly injury of some sort. Maybe they're just not quite as enthusiastic uh, as they have been. 
we, we can't have it both ways. We can't be dropping horses £16 per four runs and then say, ah, oh, well, you know, let, let's, let's, let's leave him on 146. He's won that race. He's won £25,000 in that race. But we won't actually change his rating. Let's just let's, let's, let's see what but happens Rob when he Philip, runs in a handicap. That was a seven-runner race, yeah? Absolutely. Three of them pulled up. Yeah. The Giant Bolster has won one race in four years. Yep. Splash of Ginge is clearly a shadow and had the visors on as they mm -hmm. connections desperately tried mm -hmm. to get something out of him. Yep. And Rocky Creek has absolutely lost the plot. OK, so should we have left him completely? Well, obviously not, but you ah. didn't need to put him up 14, did you? So, so what would have been reasonable then? I would say six to eight. And, and that's just like a get, an educated guess, isn't it, really? Well, yes. Exactly. I look back at educated, yeah, the, and there's the, and there's the difference. I look back at what was he doing when he was in form a year or so before that, and I put him back to that sort of level. Because how do I know now he's got cheek pieces on? He could be better than that mark. For if all he's I know. tailed off next time, would you drop him sixteen? Well, of course you would. If, well, you wouldn't be putting no. You wouldn't be. I won't be dropping him sixteen pound. Absolutely no chance. But, but would I be dropping him if he can't be competitive in handicap next year? Of course, because that's my job. It's my job is to get horses competitive in handicaps. Mm. That horse, on his run at Ascot in, in the previous winter, is certainly competitive off his current mark of 160, because he's already shown me he can be. And now he's got cheek pieces on. Who's to say how, he, how well he's going to run? Tom in, es uh, Tom in Essex, Tom Essex on Twitter says, watching Ask the Handicap is like poking your tongue into the hole of a recently extracted tooth. Despite the pain, you just can't not do it. And there's a very good an uh, analogy there. I like that, Tom. Uh, you should sit in this chair. Uh, it's like having the tooth. Um, right, Pat Cooney from Bet365 clearly isn't happy with your handicap weights. says, why not wait until after Cheltenham? before releasing the Grand National Weights, then you wouldn't be caught out by all these horses. Well, first of all, I don't feel caught out. Well, you clearly are. And you've just already said no. that Sylvini Arca Conti would be top weight. Uh, that, that so you've been caught out? That doesn't mean that I feel, Boston Bob. feel caught out. Four pounds well in? These are just things that you take on the chin. This is all part of anti-post uh, betting. If you want and, to and, get and, them all to finish in a straight line, Phil, and, you don't and, want to be caught out. And early, and early closing handicaps. That's the, the nature of the beast. I think we get fantastic publicity. We close the Grand National two months before the race. The amount of publicity that you get, the amount of interest that you get, is absolutely massive. Why, why suddenly wait for another month? I, you know, I, I can't see any value in that at all. The, as long as the sponsors are happy, which they are, as long as Aintree are happy, which they are, uh, as long as the general public are happy, which I think they are, the bookmakers are clearly happy, wh where's the problem? I can't see any advantage in delaying it. Having a look at Uber, says Obo, uh, his rating there on, on screen. It's, it's amazing how close he and Sausalito Sunrise are, he are with real gold cup horses like Don Poli. He's only three pounds higher than Sausalito Sunrise now. Who, who, Sausalito? Don Poli. Well, 166. Don, 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 we have not got to the bottom of Don Poli. There's no question. Well, no one that. has. No, because he's a very lazy type horse. I'm sure he's going to be better the further he goes. Uh, let's see what happens in uh, over three and a quarter miles at Cheltenham. Let's see what happens over four and a half miles at Aintree. I, I, I'd be no surprise to me to see Don Poli in the 170s at the end of the season. Yeah, these, uh, this isn't including the latest, is it? Because Silviniarco is still on 159 there. <coughs> What's he on to now? He's on one five. He's in one. Uh, Silvanioka Conti now is on 169. Right. Okay. Yeah. He's bang right up there. So with, he's bang right. With smart place. Let's. Um. Uh, you're going to have to whir your computer up. Algernon Pazam. Mm -hmm. A L G E R L N O N. Pazham. Yep. Um, plus seven, according to Mark Tomskin, for a second in a class two handicap. Manello Rocco not raised for a second in a grade two. It says where's the consistency? OK, so this was a banger in November. Um, well, because just because it's got a title of a grade two is completely irrelevant. It's the quality of the form. And there's a subtle difference between Algernon Pazan's race at Banger and who was the other one? Manila Rocco? Yes. <coughs> and Manila Rocco's race uh, the other day. One's a handicap and one isn't. So the first thing that you have in a handicap is that everything is there because you hope it's got an equal chance. Right? In a non-handicap, the weights are done in terms of, pen, of, of a penalty structure, but they may not bear any resemblance whatsoever to handicap ratings. So Algernon Pazam is beaten a neck in, in a handicap 
off, uh, off a mark of 135. Perfectly reasonable to put him up by six or seven pound. Uh, he's, 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 he's a neck off winning the race. The average amount that winners go up is eight pounds. So to have a neck second going up seven is perfectly reasonable. To go back to Manila Rocco, right, the horse that beat him was rated 145 and he beat him at level weights by, I think, three quarters of a length. I called it two. I had them one going in on the race on 143, one going in on 145. They've, done, they've run to their ratings. Why, why change a rating when a horse hasn't actually appeared to exceed it in any way, shape or form? So I'm, I've got no problem having Manella Rocco on 143, and I think it's Vita de Rock is 145. He was the winner of the race. Absolutely not a problem having him on 145. He, that was what he was going into the race. I haven't moved him up at all because he's not done anything that I didn't think he could do. Did I think he could beat Manella Rocco, who was two pound inferior horse to him? Yes. Did it happen? Yes, it did. Why, 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 do, why, why change things when what's happened is actually what you expected to happen? I'm still not quite having. I can see it's a good sort of way for you to squeeze yourself out of a situation, but I'm still not having this situation that you don't give horses ratings that aren't rated in handicaps. I mean, we know that Dovan won at Cheltenham last year off 155, and he won off punches down off 160. He That's what he was rated. He didn't. But that was his rating you, going into the race. You only win off a rating when you run in a handicap. You, that may have been your rating. But going. you will tell us after this year's Cheltenham Festival what rating the champion hurdler is given. Correct. But I will never say he's won off 160 or he's won off 160. But you wouldn't give him a rating he hasn't won off. I have, I w I'm, I'm never going to say that. You know, I, I, that is not what we say. We never t use the word, he's won off 170 if he's won a champion hurdle. But you will say... We've never done it and we never will. We're giving him a rating of Correct. 170 for winning the champion That's hurdle. That's a whole different issue. Winning off a mark is when you run in a handicap off that mark. Winning to running to a mark is a whole different issue. But, but to run in a handicap, let's just say, let's take the Hennessy as an example. Okay. If Conagry ran in the Hennessy, yes. it would run in the Hennessy off the mark that you gave the horse after it had won the Gold Cup. Correct. But that's, but that's running in a handicap My point's proven. off that mark. But if Conagry doesn't ever run in a handicap but again... this is playing never semantics, run Philip. You're trying to... No, you're using a word that's incorrect. Sorry. A deep breath and breathe out <sighs> breathe in right we'll do one more before the break if i can just get through this um right judge lamb has says smart place faust leader gone up a few pounds will the king george be reassessed no uh it won't be um i think the third horse i don't think uh, third horse alpha off i don't think he's run again subsequently nope. and the, those horses Yes, you're quite right, they have run well subsequently, but they were beaten too far to have any relevance to the, King, to the result of the King George. So I'm happy with the result of the King George. I'm happy with them on 176. Um, we've been talking earlier about um, horses getting inflated ratings. Far be it from me for inflating Vator and cue card any higher than they've already been uh, put to. I'm happy with them on 176 relative to other horses, what they've achieved in the past. Let's see what they do when they go to Cheltenham. I'm happy to accept you've got bronchitis, but I do feel that you are just today, you're just stirring the pot a bit, and, and it's being noted out there in Twitter land as well. Jack uh, Milner says, just because it was a grade two, it's completely irrelevant. I'm sure Phil's just trying to wind Chapman up now. I mean, you are, aren't you? You're, you're playing no, the, the absolute devil's advocate The title of a, whore, of a race is not relevant to the quality of the form. If, if every time it was a grade one, we suddenly said, well, because it's a grade one, we've got to have the winner on 173, we'd lose complete credibility. You've, you, you assess horses through other horses, not the fact that it's a class one, a class two, a class three, it's completely, utterly irrelevant. And to go back to the original point about um, Algernon Pazam, there's a subtle difference. Algernon Pazam ran in a class two handicap Horses have gone into that race with hopefully an equal chance. He's shown himself better than that. The horses on Saturday have not shown themselves better than that. Well, I'm not convinced, but Louise uh, thinks you're getting the best of it at the moment. She says you've got no hope, chat, with that, Phil Smith. 
you're looking a little hot and flustered. Not hot or flustered. Just cannot believe that Phil doesn't understand how you rate horses in graded races. We'll be back after this.